Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Did Patrick McHenry just tell us that crypto, we're going to get regulation from Congress on crypto because the SEC and the CFTC can't figure out what each other is doing and we really do need to get regulation started in the US? Let's play the clip and find out what he said. Spicy, let's check it out. This is Patrick McHenry, he's doing an interview with Coindesk TV. Let's play this out and see what he says here. It obviously, it seems to me that uh, Chairman Gen Gensler wasn't quite clear with you. Is that, that's a fair cat categorization of it, that he's not being clear with his plans to regulate crypto and specifically with Ether? What he exposed is publicly is what he's been set doing privately. This whole thing, come on in and talk to me. And then, and then he goes after anyone who comes in and talks to them. He goes after them with legal proceedings. So th this, this just belies the absurdity of this, of his leadership, the Securities Exchange Commission. He could provide clarity. He could provide consumer protection. And yet he presided over the biggest loss of consumer investments with the crypto fallout over, over the last two years. And he's not. Let's recap. Three Arrows Capital, Terra Luna. FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi. Where was Gary on any of that? Nowhere. Gary was nowhere. And you want, and Gary wants more money? I've done a damn thing to make things better. In fact, he's made things worse. Get him, Patrick. Uh, and made legitimate actors and uh, taken the legitimate actors and pushed them out of the sphere and allowed illicit actors to run rampant. It is the opposite of consumer protection. It's the opposite of safety and sound. It's this opposite of capital formation. It is a terrible regime. And what he exposed in two minutes with answering my questions is how bad this is that he can't even clarify one one piece of technology that's been a long existence and provides some level of thinking around his approach to digital assets. He won't do any of that. So Congress will act. We're going to step in. We're going to clarify this. And it's my hope that it'll be a bipartisan vote and that we're going to be able to make law here over his dithering and over his, over his bad approach to consumer protection, safety and soundness and capital formation. Congress is going to have to act. He just said it right there. If you are a Democrat, if you are a Republican, know that one out of five Americans who can vote own cryptocurrency and we are voting with our wallets and we have a lot of wallets. Okay. You better get this regulation. Good. We America needs to stay the leader. China, Russia, they cannot take over the blockchain space, guys. We need to be a leader. Patrick McHenry, if you are in his in his district, go show him some love, show him some support, maybe donate, whatever you need to do. But that's a guy on our side. We need more people like him. I just wanted to show you this sexy photo. This is from Swift. All right, and then you have what's in the middle here. Oh, shit. I said this last year. I said this last year. You're going to see Ripple. Ripple will be a white label for Swift. I said it. I hope I'm right. I think I'm right. But also, there's Earthport. Visa and MasterCard fought over Earthport. Why? Maybe it has to do with this new system. Oh, it's getting good. It's getting good. All right, this is from the U.S. Faster Payments Council. 44% of banks are implementing FedNow right now. 62% have implemented or are implementing real-time payments. 77 have implemented or implementing Zelle. 85 have implemented or are Im implementing same-day ACH. 27% plan to implement real-time payments. 44% to implement FedNow. Now, let me ask you this, bankers. This 44% that's going to offer their customers better services, cheaper services, more services. Do you think they're going to stay at your shit bank that has none of this? Or you think they're going to go over across the street where they can get 24 seven, 365 payments. They can send money to their family for cheap and they can really get value finally from their banking system. Or are they going to stay with your shit bank that doesn't want to adopt any of this? What do you think is going to happen? I bet you're not a bank in a year or two from now. I'll make the bet. I'll make the bet. This is another great crib guys. We I got fired today. <sighs> Hot. The debate around stable coins has been incredibly confused. It's probably been harmful to consumers. It's probably been harmful to the nation. One of the problems is with lack of clarity from Congress, many things are called stable coins, which should not be. What we need is clarity to define stable coins so that we understand that stable coins built right 
are actually not new and are relatively mundane financial instruments. If you look at frameworks that have worked, like the framework from the NYDFS, these things look like conservative banks, maybe government money market funds. These are the sorts of things we know how to address as a financial system. We can regulate them. In the current environment, our regulation is currently chaos for stable coins. If I am an issuer and I want to create a stable coin, I technically don't know if I'm going to be answering to a state regulator, a federal banking regulator, the SEC, the CFTC. It's unworkable. And what this means, and it pains me to say this as an American, is that things are moving offshore. Right now, over the past year, the biggest winner has been Tether. They are offshore. They don't work well with us. They facilitate some activity they probably shouldn't. They facilitate some activity that they probably shouldn't. In 2018, 4% of people, four, four people controlled the majority of Tether. Stay away from Tether, please. Tether is probably the biggest rug and scam on the crypto market. Don't keep your money in Tether. I am not a financial advisor, but Bitfinex on Twitter puts out a ton of information about Tether and how bad that company is. Go look up Bitfinex on, on Twitter. That guy drops fire. I will try to leave a link to his Twitter on the bottom. He does amazing research. Don't listen to me. Go follow his research and make your own choice because that, and at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own choices. I prefer USDC. Doesn't matter at DPEG. Had nothing really to do with the technology. Had to do with people panicking in Silicon Valley Bank. Tether. Ugh. But the chaos is leading that stable coin to grow while others shrink. The other thing that's happening is other countries are moving into this space. Just this morning before the hearing, I saw news that Russia is exploring legislation to formalize their ability to transact in crypto. If we don't take the field, others will do so before us. And Love they may it. not be doing it in ways that we like. So in the end, this matters. I would call upon the subcommittee to think deeply about passing some sort of bill about stable coins. We can't let perfect be the enemy of good when one of our enemies here is time. Right now, this doing guy. this right will bring financial inclusion through the dollar to billions of people globally. This is not just a U.S. concern, and it reinforces the strength of the dollar in the world. It will help us fund the deficit. Every dollar that goes into stable coins ends up in traditional financial instruments that we can use to fund our government, like T-bills. It will bolster our reserve currency status, and it will ensure that if the blockchain continues to grow at the pace it has from 2012 to present, the standard of transaction on there for a currency is the dollar. This guy is the people, we need more people like him talking to Congress. Great job, fantastic information. Also, Russia has become now the second biggest miner of the Bitcoin network. If Russia becomes the first and they control 51% of the Bitcoin network will be banned globally. Mark my words, because then Russia can then control what transactions go through and what transactions don't go through. And they'll label it as a terrorist state, the way to send value for uh, bad actors, hundred percent guarantee it's going to happen. So we need to be very careful. Russia cannot control over 51% of the Bitcoin mining pool. That would be very bad for Bitcoiners. Look out for that. Also with Micah, Micah, Micah met with Ripple? You say, sir. Interesting. I like it. All right. This is Amazon now talking a little bit of spicy. They're talking about using XRP for payment. Institution that allows fiat on ramps to distribute it for blockchain technologies such as Ripple and Stellar and Interledger. This is available via APIs, so developers, I think such as yourselves, can embed it into their applications and allow users to integrate with USD or we have eight fiat currencies coming on board and reach different countries. But this basically allows users to interact with your ecosystem. That was one more clip. We're best collaborating with them up front. And then of course payments. Right. We also have someone on our team dedicated to seeing where XRP for payments can be of use and working with different merchants as well as consumers. Working with different merchants as well as consumers, guys. Uh, platforms and apps to see where. Whatever coin you're holding, are they working with Amazon? Asking, asking a simple question. Are they? Yes, no, maybe so. Listen, also guys, on Friday, April 28th, I am doing a live Sensei chat for free on YouTube. So my Sensei chats look like this.
I go through them. This I just did this one with my community. It was an hour and 45 minutes of straight fire clips and fire information. You want to know why the entire world is going to start using this technology? Because you can move $50 million for 30 cents instantly. Boom. Yeah, people, the tribalism in this industry is insane. So there, there's Bitcoin maximalists, there's every, but everybody agrees XRP sucks. And I actually, I don't really get it, right? It's, they're a legitimate company. They don't pretend to be something they're not. And they're really good at one thing, moving money fast and cheap. And it's fantastic. It fills a big need. And for a hedge fund like us to be able to denominate in Ripple and XRP, I just did the same thing, <laughs> is really good. We did our first close. We moved north of four, fifty million dollars into the company in Ripple in XRP in two seconds, and it cost thirty cents. Now that is amazing. The only there's no way to do that with fiat or Bitcoin. There's just no way to do it that fast and that cheaply. And he goes on to talk a little bit more about that. But guys, fifty million dollars for thirty cents. There's nothing that can beat that right now. And central banks and half of banks in Japan are already going to be using XRP. Come on, guys. This is where it ends. This is where it ends. A at night, you are laying in bed like this. Check this out. This is the best clip of them all. Let's end it with this. You ready? Sleep tight, my beloved. You're my ticket out of this hellhole. Homer. Sorry. Our ticket out of this hellhole. <laughs> Sleep. Oh, shit. Hey. Is it your ticket or is it our ticket out of this hellhole? Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun with this video. It's been a couple days with the move and everything that's been going on in my life. It's been crazy, but I hope you enjoyed this content. Will Congress give us crypto regulation? They're going to have to because if we rely on somebody named Gary Gensler, we're all fucked in the end. Let's be honest. Like, share, please help me grow the channel. I need to get to 8,000 subscribers. Please help me. I, I'm like Homer every night, just holding my Exum wallet like soon.